So, um, today I decided to start playing with um, a pipette puller, which I picked up in an auction a while ago. Uh, pipette pullers are instruments used for creating uh, micro pipettes, um, which are um, basically very small pipettes, very small tubes, um, which come to a very fine point. Um, you probably can't see very well on the camera, but basically this, this capillary has been pulled such that the tip um, is on the order of uh, a few nanometers, a uh, few uh, microns in size. Uh, you can actually pull nanometer scale uh, tips with pipette pullers, but it's quite difficult. <laughs> uh, so I've never done any pipette pulling before. They're used in electrophysiology in general. So they're used to pipette uh, to create uh, pipettes that can be put inside cells. Um, so they're used in um, like bilayer experiments to suck up parts of bilayers and to insert pores and do like ion channel experiments and other um, uh, kind of cellular electrophysiology um, ionic current experiments. Anyway, I picked this up in an auction with a bunch of other stuff, but you know, I hadn't got around to using it. And uh, today I tried it out. And as you could see, um, you know, I pulled a pipette, whether it's any good, I don't know. Um, but uh, I thought I'd do a quick video on the instrument. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so let's see if we can pull a, a pipette actually on the video. Um, so, uh, the way it works is it takes this tube, which is a, uh, borosilicate, uh, glass tube. Uh, this one has an outer di diameter of one millimeter and an inner diameter of 0.75 uh, millimeters. And it applies heat to the tube and it pulls it. And that's basically all there is to it. And uh, as it's pulling, it can do all sorts of kind of fancy things to vary the temperature. Um, but yeah, that's about it. It kind of pulls it and then it comes to a very, it pulls the tube into a very fine tip. Um, and there's a lot of kind of art to doing that. Um, when I first got this, I have no idea what parameters uh, I should use. Um, but in the guide, it says I should use uh, a value of uh, 15 uh, plus the ramp test value. So what I did is I first uh, ran the ramp test, um, which you do with the tube installed. And then you go into the program, you press clear and then zero. And then a, there's a menu and you press one to run the ramp test. And it basically tries heating and pulling this thing and and kind of checks uh, at what temperature it slowly starts to move I think and that's you know that's a factor that's dependent on the instrument and the filament that's used um, and that kind of thing so then I just plugged in the values that it has in the manual um, but okay and these two things here these are the actual um, this is what gets pulled this is what pulls apart so these things move apart um, and we have to install the tube between those two uh, things. So we undo the, uh, we kind of undo the knob a little bit. And we just stick the tube in like that. And it says in the manual to do it. So it's sticking out a couple of centimeters and then tighten it. So like that. So it's just kind of sitting in there. Um, and then let's see. And then you've got these two things here which just release the pulleys. So you have to press these levers down and then you kind of hold it together like like that. Hopefully you can see, see that. Um, and then you undo this so it's loose and you kind of push it through into the other one and then you do up 
half of them. And I would guess you do it up not too tight. Otherwise you may break the borosilicate. The borosilicate actually is, is pretty flexible, surprisingly. Uh, it's surprisingly kind of flexible. Um, so I don't know if you can kind of see that, but it, it will kind of bend. Oops. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, it will break too. <laughs> um, but it will bend without breaking. Um, so I got um, heat a heat value from the ramp test of 519, I think it was. So it was uh, whatever, 15 or whatever plus that. And then these were the other just standard values uh, from the manual. It also says something about the pressure value, but I don't know. There's no option to enter the pressure. So yeah, so I just pressed these down to release the pulleys and then pushed them together. And then the glass uh, tubing has gone through. And you can see in here there's a little filament which was already installed. So I haven't bought a new filament yet. Um, I got these tubes. These are just the tubes I found on eBay that were about $10 for 500 So I bought those. Um, they're generally not very expensive. They're about a dollar each. Um, but you buy them in lots of, uh, of several hundred. Okay. So then we close the lid. And press pull up and see if it works you can see it lighting up heat the filament heating up and hopefully it doesn't explode there we go that's it okay so that's done I think um, and we have some beautiful uh, pipettes no idea what the feature sizes are, but and I, you know, um, you know, they looked good to me under a microscope, and I'll link in below some um, uh, some microscope images too. Um, but uh, you know, my hope, you know, it's really hard to tell because the tip is like, like I said, it's a mic micron feature size uh, tip. So under, I'm just using an inspection microscope, so there's no way I'm really going to see. The, the tip, so it's like a, um, I don't know, 50x uh, magnification that I've been looking at it under at the moment. But I will post the pictures, and then to, to actually see if these have worked, I don't know, that's the next step, so I have to figure out what to do. <laughs> um, I could, I'm thinking maybe I can look at ionic currents through them, because um, uh, I have uh, sort of my own self-built transimpedance amplifiers, and I also have a patch clamping rig and I have um, you know the, the buffer solution to do that so I may try that next but basically I can pull pipettes um, and it kind of works and each time obviously because it's it's one tube that it's pulling apart you get two matched pipettes and um, the idea is that those are kind of matched and they should have identical feature sizes is my understanding um, I have a lot more to learn about about the the rig and how it works, but uh, yeah, I, I was quite happy that it worked at all because I got it. These things quite, cost a few thousand new, I guess, um, and it was I think a couple of hundred pounds I paid for it or something as part of this auction. Um, so I feel like yeah, it was a good buy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's that, and uh, hopefully I'll update more when I've done some tests with ionic currents or like other tests. So there we go.